Last week, my darlings, I had an epiphany. The best idea I ever had. No, I had a couple of other good ideas in my life. But this one is a, is a close uh, top five. Yeah, top five. Let's, let's call it top five. Um, this is chapter two of Hotty Hot Spring. Hotty Hot Spring is where I firstly tried a polyamorous relationship. Well, this entire story will be my attempt at it. Because I have difficulty writing stuff that I never experienced. That's why I don't do NSFW. I need a girlfriend. Anyways, uh, before I dive right into it, I would like to remind you to do the regular ritual, which is liking or disliking, commenting something down below, and watching the video until the end. By the end of it, I will even bring back question time, the only part of the video where I answer one of your questions. As a matter of fact, I even created a little Discord text channel specifically for that. And, uh, well, we will be answering one of their questions, one of the Discord people's questions. If you have any questions for me, please leave them down in the comments below. Lastly, doing all of these things that I just told you increases my staying in the YouTube algorithm, meaning YouTube will uh, suggest my videos more often. And when YouTube suggests videos more often, there's a higher chance that people click them. This increase increases my so-called click-through rate, which then means I get even more suggestions. So if you do all that, this is the best way how you can um, healthily grow my channel. And please do that, because this is definitely out of my ability to do. I cannot cheese it, is what I mean. Alright, so please help a guy out. Lastly, this is the cute Adam picture of the day. How often did I say lastly now? I think three times because of outtakes. Anyways, lastly, this is the cute animal picture of the day. I hope you find it cute. And let's go right into the story. Something strange had happened last week. Something both morally dubious, but also very entertaining. Making you very uncertain as to what to make of it. Your parents owned a large property with both a hot spring in and a forest adjacent to it. On top of that, affordable prices. This had made your family quite influential and powerful. Your dad even struck a deal with a few hero agencies in the city, told training camps and seminars there. Because of this, you were always on top of current gossip, and even got into the prestigious UA High School on a recommendation which conveniently was only an hour away from your home. So it was common for you to invite friends, and even more common for fellow students to come and relax. However, because of this you accidentally found out that two boys in your class had a crush on you. The ever so popular Kirishima and the infamous Bakugo. Why you of all people? Uh, well, that didn't matter now. The two boys had come up with both the worst and best idea they could think of. Turning it into a competition. The first person you would say I love you to would win. But luckily you had heard everything. And you could play by its rules. Of course, the good thing to do was to either call this entire thing off or end it by going for the boy you liked the most. But why spoil their, and most importantly, your fun? Especially since this competition didn't have any rules to speak of. So Kirishima stole a head start by asking you out on a date, before this little challenge even started. The date itself was nothing bad either. He had taken you out to an amusement park by the harbor. And he even went ahead and spent two months worth of pocket money on a claw machine to get you a unicorn plushie that had sparked your attention. And once he brought you home and left you, 
You'd quickly run into your bedroom to scream into your pillow. <sighs> Why were you doing this? Why was this happening to you? And why did you love it so much? It had been two weeks since then. The two boys being awfully nice to you in ways you didn't expect. During physical training, Bakugo purposefully got beaten by you and Kirishima almost forced you to make him carry your stuff. Funny enough, he didn't have the confidence to tell you why, so when Momo saw him carry your stuff, he had no way to refuse carrying her bags as well, creating a new tradition within Class 1A, where he carried the girls' bags. True for dare! shouted Mina, all of a sudden, as if a bug had bitten her, granting her the attention of everyone in your class. It was five minutes before the first period, so your teacher hadn't shown up yet. And the pink-skinned girl grinned. Come on, guys! Don't stare! She said before clapping her hands. I believe this will be a great way to get to know each other better. I mean, we're always hanging out in our group, so a long game of truth or dare spread across the entire school year is perfect for that. You bit your lower lip. This had grown from a suggestion you had given her two days ago and a wave of pleasure overcame you as you now could harvest its fruits. <laughs> I like the idea, you said as you glanced over to Bakugo and Kirishima. The two angrily stared at each other, before both stepping up and saying, We're in! Your heart jumped. This was so evil, you thought. But now, there was no way of going back on it. So, uh, who starts? Was your innocent question. Minetta! Started Mina with a shout. True for dare! Momo visibly sighed in relief. Uh, The purple gremlin was taken off guard. What did I do? Mina snickered. <laughs> Nothing. Yet. That was her only reply. Ugh. Fine. Dare. I want you to put shock on Aizawa's chair. And the mad lad actually did it. Kickstarting this game of games. Everyone was involved. Both truths and dares were posted into a group chat with Ida as its judge. Lucky him. Ida being the judge meant that he was the only one who wasn't asked to say or do anything. To manage a game of this size, the person chosen last would choose the next victim of the game. And after two weeks, it seemed to have taken a very dark turn. The dares became more dangerous, and the truths more juicy. Not only that, small friend groups had been built, basically defeating the entire purpose of it. They were trying to outdate each other while protecting their own group members from anything going too far. At least, they respected the game and Ida's judgement enough to not just throw truths or dares at the same two people. Yourself had joined into a small group made up of yourself, Bakugo, Kirishima, Mina and Kaminari. But maybe having Kaminari in your group was a mistake as during a study session with you and your group, he suddenly blurted out, TRUTH OR DARE! straight to your face. Bro, we're studying, protested Kirishima. So, it's a game, you gotta respect the game, man. Don't make her do anything stupid, growled Bakugo. Thought we were a group. For a moment, everyone was quiet. Tension unreasonably high. With a soft smile, you pulled out your phone, and so did Kaminari. Truth or dare, he typed in, followed by your name, making the challenge official. Dare, you typed. I dare you to play seven minutes in heaven with Bakugo. You squeaked and almost threw your phone at him. What the hell? shouted Bakugo. You can't involve others in a dare, you moron! barked Hiroshima. 
Kamino shrugged and grinned. Fine, let's ask Ida. Silence. You glanced over at Bakugo. His head was red like a tomato. He knew he wanted these seven minutes, but he needed to object. Otherwise his crush on you would have gotten obvious to the others. So... asked Kaminari with a dopey smile. Bakugo didn't answer. But he grabbed his phone and sent the following message. Fine, I'll do it. Then he grabbed you by the hand. It wasn't a rough grip, yet somehow he managed to make his knuckles go wide. Is he going to kill her? Asked Mina while you were dragged outside by Bakugo. Next to the library you were studying in was a janitor's closet, and there he quickly pushed you inside, leaving you with him in darkness. Uh, please don't hurt me. You couldn't see, but you could hear him. And suddenly, two fingers gently pushed under your chin. This is what you're supposed to do, right? In these uh, seven-minute things, right? He said right twice. It, And it almost sounded like he was purring. Like a tiger. Or an equally big cat and your heart beat faster and faster. You could feel his warmth coming close, like a wall of flames. Not even Kirishima had dared to kiss you on your first date. So he is clearly getting the upper hand right now. His breath tickled over your face. And then, for just a split second, the tips of your nose touched. And somehow you managed to not ruin this moment with an awkward joke. A second later, you were rorted with something soft and warm pressing against your mouth. With his other hand, he gently pushed you close against him, making you feel his entire body press against yours. He was an amazing kisser. Not that you had anything to compare it to. He didn't even push his tongue into your mouth. Not that you would have objected to that. If you had known he was capable of such gentle and soft motions, you probably would have chosen him over Kirishima by now. A soft moan escaped you, and he withdrew. <sighs> Sorry if I hurt you. He muttered. No. You squeaked. I... I like this. You couldn't see it, but he was smirking. He felt as if he'd just got ahead in the battle. But before he could go back at it, two knocks interrupted you two. Yo, seven minutes are over! Came Kaminari's voice with a chuckle. Damn! Coughed Bakugo under his breath. And with that, you returned to the rest of the group. A weird silence having filled the room. You wondered if something may have happened during these seven minutes. Ah, uh, well... Um, sorry, by the way. I thought I had to out... I thought I had to outdo what Mineta did me do yesterday said Kaminari. It's fine, but who do goes next? You involve Bakugo and I feel it would be unfair if he didn't get a reward for participating. Uh, not like anything happened. Kaminari groaned. Ugh, seriously? Your eyes wandered over to Bakugo. He looked very relieved. It's fine, whatever. A devious thought came to you. And you giggled. <laughs> Kitty, truth or dare? Bakugo's face turned to mild anger. <laughs> dare me, baby, he said challengingly. You snickered. And then typed into the chat. Is it against the rules to make the same dare again? Was your question. 
Holy shit! shouted Kaminari. From Mina only came an elongated, oh! And Bakugo simply frowned. <laughs> What's up, big guy? laughed Kirishima, slapping his friend on the back. I thought nothing happened. You grin. Yep, nothing happened. I hate both of you, he muttered. Then your phone beeped, signaling you received an answer. I allow it, read Ida's answer. This was followed by an explosion of reactions. Lucky, typed Mineta. I wish I knew this sooner, came from Ochako. Screw you, came from Jiro. And just a minute later, you found yourself inside the same closet. You were in here with Bakugo just a moment ago. So, <laughs> he said with a chuckle. I don't believe one second that nothing happened in here. Smells too much like passion in here. You giggled. <laughs> Maybe, was your answer. <laughs> that was his only reply. Alright, so, wanna make out? He almost said it too happily. Well, that's very bold of you to say, you said challengingly. Well, we did go on a date. He said with a playfully annoyed sigh. You grin. Fine. Come here, lover boy. Did this make you a slut? Uh, who cares? If two of the hottest guys in your high school were falling for you, why not enjoy every little bit of it? With an almost sinful smile, he stepped closer to you. His arms snaking around your waist. <laughs> you have no insecurities, do you? You asked. I mean, at first, yeah. Just... Just follow my lead, huh? And then he awkwardly shoved you into him. He certainly was more rough than Bakugo. Hungrily, he devoured your lips. Not giving you a single moment to breathe. It was fantastic. From the moment his lips crashed onto yours, his tongue made its way into your mouth. And just as aggressively, you pushed your own tongue past his teeth. The stubbles of his badly shaven face scratched against your soft skin as he firmly gripped the back of your head to keep you from escaping. Wet noises filled the closet, and you could feel your knees weaken. How were these two guys so good at this? Bakugo, soft and gentle like a summer breeze, and Kirishima, aggressive and demanding like an exotic pet. You could no longer deny it. You... Wanted them both. You needed them. Both of them. You could never be happy with just one of them. And you could never be happy again without any of them. This realization seemingly returned your own strength. Giving you just enough energy for one last push against this unrelenting assault. And with a loud thud, both of you fell against the door. Holy shit! cried Okirishima, more of surprise rather than pain. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, you groaned. Sorry, he said. Nah, it's fine, it's fine, <laughs> he coughed. I should be the one to say sorry. No, you thought. This really was... Not the moment for apologies. We have reached the end of the video. And you know what this means? It means question time. Question time. Question time. Uh, it's been a long time since I submitted question time. And uh, ooh, it's been like, what, almost a year? That was because nobody asked me questions at some point. 
Probably because people just stopped watching uh, up until question time, so I just stopped it. Guess I answered everything you guys wanted to know. But now I have created a Discord uh, channel where you can ask me questions and I might answer one of them at the end of the video. Same with comments. Comment any questions down below. If I find them interesting enough, I might answer one of your questions at the end of next video. Now, today's question was given by the Discord user Cookie. And Cookie is asking, hmm, what inspired you to write and read fanfictions? That is a double-sided question because they both have different answers. But let's start with part one. Why did I start reading fanfictions? Honestly, because I lost a bet. I'm not even kidding. Uh, the first fanfiction I read on my channel was an NSFW Papyrus fanfiction. Papyrus from Undertale. Uh, specifically Papyrus X Spaghetti. With the famous last sentence of the entire story being Undyne discovering him doing the deed with the spaghetti and screaming GUYS! Papyrus is doing it with a plate of spaghetti! No, genuinely, that is how the story ended. Um, but yeah, I lost the bet. That's what inspired it. And it just stuck, because before I was just doing Let's Plays that got at best 200 views. That video got 3000 views in 24 hours. Papyrus doing it with a plate of spaghetti. And that's why it stuck. And the other part is uh, what inspired me to write fanfictions. Honestly? Sheer and utter spite and hatred. Oh boy, that's, uh, that's a good answer. Simply put, uh, I used to read stories from other people. However, these people eventually realized, oh wait, this person is making money. And didn't ask for our stories to be read. Uh, for first of all, why would you put your story publicly available if you don't want people to read it? Uh, secondly, uh, they said it, it took me two months to write this 2000 word story. Yeah, guess what? This story was 2000 words and I wrote it in two hours. Fuck you. Okay, I don't know where I made the cut in, but uh, I started losing my shit. And I went on a 10 minute tangent calling people that are most likely underage and don't know better uh, Karens and uh, other unsettling insults. Sorry. Uh, I don't know where I cut this in, what I cut out, how much I cut out, but uh, in short, uh, go fuck yourself. You know who you are. I'm better than you. And that feels unbelievably great. Alright. Uh, that took a dark turn. My name is Suitopi. I genuinely hope you enjoyed this rendition of Question Time. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a like. Remember to comment. And ask me anything down below. Or in the Discord. Let's go. And uh, have a nice day. Goodbye.